Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do. We got a great friend of the show, Ryan Grimm, on to talk about a new push to try to keep corporate affiliated appointees out of the Biden administration. Not that I had a lot of high hopes, <laughs> but interesting to dig into nonetheless. Um, we also have a reporter on to talk about what is going on in terms of the wildfires on the West Coast as those continue to rage. But we wanted to start with some new troubling developments in terms of President Trump's stewardship of a potential vaccine. Yeah, the Vaccine wars continue in the public, and what really caught everybody's eye was the CDC director, Robert Redfield, testified before Congress yesterday, making some news both about mask wearing and actually about when the original deployment of the vaccine will occur and how long that's going to take. Let's take a listen. Face masks, these face masks are the most important, powerful public health tool we have. And I will continue to appeal for all Americans, all individuals in our country, to embrace these face coverings. I've said it, if we did it for six, eight, 10, 12 weeks, we'd bring this pandemic uh, under control. These actually, we have clear scientific evidence, they work and they are our best defense. I might even go so far as to say that this face mask is more guaranteed to protect me against COVID than when I take a COVID vaccine. I think there will be vaccine that initially be available sometime between November and December, but very limited supply and will have to be prioritized. If you're asking me when is it going to be generally available to the American public so we can begin to take advantage of vaccine to get back to our regular life, I think we're probably looking at third, late second quarter, third quarter 2021. Ooh, that is a big, first of all, that's a crushing date for many of us who wanted to go back to normal. But, but I think people need to have that date in their mind. You, you should mean, have it. That's a realistic thing. That's what Dr. Fauci is saying here as I'm well. I'm glad they said it. I would rather know than not, but man, that sucks. But, and the real thing that, uh, this is part of the issue I always have with this though. That stuff he's saying there about masks. If masks are more likely to protect you than vaccine, then why did Redfield and other people and the Surgeon General lie about masks in early February and March, right? I mean, I, I can't stop thinking about this. I was like, you know, by that logic, we've had the cure since February 2020. And yeah. we told people not just didn't say use it. We told people not to do it. I mean, right. all don't of go the, buy masks. Yeah, don't buy a mask. Don't wear a mask. Not wearing a mask will not protect you from coronavirus. This is something that the surgeon Surgeon General said in early March. And so now to hear it, it's just very rich. And now you see really about what these people have cost us, which is that now we have to wait until 2021, I third mean, quarter 2021. That is true. Yeah. And look, the evidence yeah. supports what he is saying now. I mean, you look at a country yeah. like Japan that didn't have yeah. a full shutdown. Everybody just wore masks and they were pretty much good to go. But you also have to look at the fact you got President Trump out here still mm -hmm still in the town hall this week that he did with George Stephanopoulos, like a lot of people There's say, no reason maybe. For it. Yeah, I mean, it's just outrageous at this point. And to see his rallies with everybody gathered together and no, and very few masks in sight, not forcing people to wear them, like, yes, there was a failure at the beginning from the public health officials that we've covered, here, no doubt about it. But at this point, like, he's just ridiculous and is contributing to the politicization of freaking mask wearing, which is keeping us all still locked in our apartments and our yeah. homes for months on end. Um, the other piece that was really outrageous here is, look, yeah, it hurts to hear that it may be third quarter, end of 2021, before we really have a vaccine that's widely distributed. And President Trump doesn't want to hear it because he wants a sort of October surprise to be able to rescue his failing presidential campaign. So he goes out there yesterday and he's like, I think the CDC director was confused. Let's take a listen to that. I think he made a mistake when he said that it's just incorrect information. And I called him, and he didn't tell me that. And I think he got the message maybe confused. Maybe it was stated incorrectly. No, we're ready to go immediately as the vaccine is announced. And it could be announced in October. could be announced a little bit after October. But uh, once we go, we're ready. So, um, look, I mean, I was looking at numbers this morning from Economist Yuga. This is their most recent poll. They asked people, well, first of all, this, mm -hmm. that 62 percent say he did downplay COVID and 78 percent say he should have been straight with the public. What we see him doing here is continuing to not be straight with the public in hopes of ginning up his reelection bid. But 
72% of Americans are concerned or very concerned about the safety of a fast-tracked vaccine. And if you want to know why, look no further than moments like that. Yeah. And I think it's important, which is what we've criticized people for undermining faith in an FDA-approved vaccine. Now, look, where does that come from? I mean, where does the legitimacy for a lot of people come from whenever they doubt what's going to happen? And you're right. There's no, I mean, politicizing mask wearing, you know, today. And even then, I mean, he said in the press conference, he's like, these blue states should open up. He's constantly pushing this, like, open up message. And there's just no evidence that Americans want that. If anything, the evidence is that three-fourths of Americans, by and large, and 80 percent of elderly Americans all say consistently the same thing. We should maintain social distancing protocols, even if it means having an economic, having some sort of economic pain. And that's the thing. You can solve economic pain. That's called Congress. They can, they can, you know, distribute money. They can bail out local governments or state governments. They can give people direct stimulus payments. You can't make up the other side of that. And this is the thing he's doing, which is that he's actually playing into the worst caricatures of what the, you know, these elite liberals we've talked about on the left are saying he's meddling in the process. He's going through the process. We've also seen, though, that the CDC isn't exactly like they're not like bowing. Right. So Robert Redfield actually tweeted right after the segment. He said, quote, I 100 percent believe in the importance of vaccines and the importance in particular of a COVID-19 vaccine. And a vaccine is a thing that will get Americans back to normal everyday life. So yeah. not backing down in terms of the timeline. Is, I do think that's, that's encouraging important. to see. It is important. And same thing. I think Dr. Fauci told The Wall Street Journal the same thing literally right after the president's press conference. And so this is why those numbers that are from the poll that you put up, that's how this happened about how two thirds, three fourths of people are like, yeah, I don't trust a Trump on the coronavirus vaccine. And the real way he's getting outplayed on this is by Biden, because Biden, look, he's not his running mate. He's not, you know, in, in, the, in these weird ways, he is the worst of May Rachel Maddow and MSNBC. But he also rejects some of their more conspiratorial things, spe- specifically whenever it comes to this. And he talked about this in very clear terms yesterday at his press conference. Let's take a listen to what he said. But scientific breakthroughs don't care about calendars any more than the virus does. They certainly don't adhere to election cycles. And their timing, their approval, and their distribution should never, ever be distorted by political considerations. They should be determined by science and safety alone. So let me be clear. I trust vaccines. I trust scientists. But I don't trust Donald Trump. You know, he also said there in that crystal, they said if there's an FDA approved vaccine, do would you under this president during this administration, would you encourage people to take it? And he said, yes, no question. Absolutely. And part so there of, you go. Yeah. And right. look, I, we're plenty critical yeah. of Joe Biden here. Right. I'm plenty critical of Joe Biden in my radar today. So stay <laughs> tuned for that little little tease there for you thrown in. Um, but on this, he has handled this very, very well yep. and very responsibly, most importantly. And it's honestly refreshing to see and you haven't seen that from his running mate Kamala Harris who was like well if it's Donald Trump and she hedged and she clearly wanted to play to a partisan audience that hates this president and and is like ready to go all down the rabbit hole on a conspiracy theory here and believes that he has destroyed the federal government when you see people like the CDC director effectively standing up to him yeah. and trying to guard the sanctity of that and make sure the process is it does go forward in an appropriate way and look we'll be the first to tell you here if we see specific problems with a vaccine rollout, we will be the first to tell you absolutely. And I completely understand why people are skeptical. But I think it's partly because Joe Biden has actually served as vice president. He actually, I mean, truly, he yeah. actually understands that these words aren't just words, that not just words in some like partisan game, that they actually matter in terms of what people's actions are and how they feel about this potential vaccine when and how it comes out. And look, here's the other scary thing, as partisan as things are now, like we've seen the way that mask wearing has become a weird partisan issue. If Joe Biden does get elected, president, there's going to be a big contingent on the right that's skeptical of his stewardship of the vaccine. So I think it's incredibly important to just be consistent here in, look, 
if it goes forward through a normal process and people that are trusted public health officials sign off on it and it is FDA approved, not like Trump hydroxychloroquine, but actually like sanctioned yeah. FDA approved, all those things, then yes, we need to encourage people to take it. I can see what's happening so clearly. And this is why I think what the Trump and many of these other people are doing is so dangerous, which is that when you create this like anti, you know, anti-government getting involved in this health stuff, and you make try and prioritize things. Number one, you're dramatically against public opinion. But two, you're setting this up for what the libertarians and people a lot of money here are love to do. So under if say Joe Biden becomes president, he said yesterday in a press conference he might institute a national mask mandate. Now and there could be legal challenges or whatever. The entire professional right is gonna go all in against masks. That's a fringe position. That's like a 13% position, but they're gonna do it to try and own Biden. Yep. And I can see that I can see it so clearly. I mean, they're going to see like Biden is encouraging, you know, states to stay closed. Now we should be all in on reopening the economy. How'd that work out, folks? We covered the polling yesterday. Every Republican governor that seemed to prioritize reopening over restrictions for social distancing has now rock bottom low approval ratings in their states. Sub 40 approval ratings. Yeah. And it's like. It's so clear, the politics of it, which is that in this particular case, Americans want one thing. They want to feel safe. Yeah. And then if you could actually take care of them economically, oh, man, you're good to go. But both candidates have decided necessarily not to do that. Yeah. And the thing with Trump is I mean, he just makes everything worse. Like he makes everything partisan, tribal, political, even things like vaccines, even things like face masks. And I mean, first of all, it's exhausting. It is exhausting. Second of all, it's ripping the country apart. And third of all, it is dramatically hindering our ability to get back to a freaking normal, normal life, whatever that's going to look like going forward from here. 2021 can't come soon enough. Can't wait. All right. <laughs> More for you. We'll have our radars. That's next.